so today we're going to look at Steven Johnson syndrome. In this video, we shall be discussing the causes, the clinical features, the diagnosis, the differential diagnosis, treatment, and the complications associated with Steven Johnson syndrome. What's Steven Johnson syndrome? This is an atypical target lesion with less than 10% total body surface area involvement. This syndrome is characterized by blistering of the mucosa, detachment of the epidermis from the dermis layer, and epidermal necrosis. In this case, there is a rapid progress of erythematous macules into development of erythrodema and ebula. The most common cause is drugs and some opportunistic infection, pneumocystitis giroveni. Toxoplasmosis and mycoplasma infections mostly in children. All these three infections are opportunistic infections in immunocompromised patients. Polymorphism of antigen presenting major histocompatibility complex loci such as the carriers of the human leukocyte antigen 1502 are at a higher risk when compared to other people. The most common drugs associated with Steven Johnson syndrome are sulfonamides like sulfamethoxazole trimetoprim, nevirapine, which is an antiretroviral drug, non anti inflammatory drugs, anticonvulsants that are used to treat seizures and convulsions. Allopurinol, which is a drug that's used in the treatment of gout. Lamotrigine and Alogliptin. Steven Johnson syndrome is a side effect of these medications. A patient with Steven Johnson syndrome will present with fevers of more than 39 degrees Celsius, painful skin lesions, Myalgias or muscle pains, generalized body malaise, conjunctivitis, sore throat, and these patients will complain having pain on eating, swallowing, and urinating because of the involvement of the urethra. 90% of these patients will present with involvement of the mucosa such as the oral mucosa, the leaves, the conjunctiva, and the genitalia. So how do we diagnose a patient with Steven Johnson syndrome? When conducting a physical examination, this patient will present with a positive Nikolsky sign and a frozen skin biopsy is the one that will give a definitive diagnosis of Steven Johnson syndrome. A direct immunofluorescent assay it will be negative in these patients. What is Nikolsky sign? Okay, when you apply a manual pressure on this patient's skin, there will be a separation of the epidermis from the underlying dermis. This is a positive Nikolsky sign. Okay, the differential diagnosis that you may think when a patient presents with similar features like in Steven Johnson syndrome is perfidious, aperfigioid, acute systemic lupus, erythematosus, and sweet syndrome. What is the treatment of Steven Johnson syndrome? Basically, there is no definitive treatment for this syndrome, but Early stoppage of the causative drugs which led to the development of this syndrome before the development of Beulah is 
important. You will also need to manage these patients in an acute care setting such as an intensive care setting or unit and fluid with nutritional support. Early steroid use and cyclosporine use together with intravenous immunoglobulin These patients have a high morbidity and mortality rate because of the infections, electrolyte imbalances, hypovolemia and septic shock.